sniffles, my rhymes is cold. This real life bitch fuck up reality show. Old school mentality, new school flow. Trying to make a telling on zero. Two punks can try and battle me, but I'm the one. What's up, y'all? This is uh, Chris X Chaos in the building. That was one of my tracks y'all can catch on SoundCloud along with the other two intros from the last two episodes. Catch them on SoundCloud. Um, I'll put the link in the description. <coughs> today, um, all right, so today I wanted to talk about something that everybody in this fucking at least the United States is dealing with right now and some other parts of the world as, as well. Yeah. Mass trauma. Those of us who are old enough to remember 9-11 probably remember where we were when we heard about it. Uh, I was in middle school, 6th grade, history class. I remember the teacher telling us. I remember when we went home that day. My mom was at home because she used to work in downtown of the city that I'm in. So they sent everybody home. Uh, and uh, and it, it was weird. It was a weird. I feel like for years I felt like it didn't really affect me because I didn't know no. I didn't know anybody that was um, directly affected with nine eleven, except for the fact that later on, you know, I feel like nine eleven was the resurgence of the conspiracy theory because you know after uh, John F. Kennedy and. Um, Roswell, there wasn't really any conspiracy theories that, that gained traction the way 9-11 did, um, which is pretty interesting. I was older when I watched like documentaries like Fahrenheit, 9-11, and whatnot, and I'm not here to talk about that shit. I'm not here to say if it was a conspiracy or if it's fact or whatever, whatever, whatever. It's just factual that that sparked a lot of conspiracy theory minds, including myself. Anyway, I do remember that that year at the state fair, they had a bunch of pictures of Osama bin Laden uh, where you could like throw darts at. They were usually like balloons and shit, but then they would just have his face. <laughs> and I just remember thinking as a kid, like, that, you know, that was interesting. It stood out to me. I don't know why it stood out to me, but it stood out to me. The fact that this villain, I don't know, it was a weird, it was a weird situation. So anyway, we were all affected by that, whether we realized it or not. The same way we were all affected by that, those of us who can remember and who were affected, uh, it, this, the, this, um, let's call it the C word, because I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube, but this current, um, situation that we're all in it's traumatic it's a traumatic experience and at the end of it we're gonna it's gonna be an interesting an interesting situation to see how how different generations deal with this 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 uh this type of situation and it's gonna be traumatic i mean there's already you already got a divisive middle and you got one side where it's, it's an extreme of this, and then you got another side, it's an extreme of that. <clears throat> the way people are two-sided about this whole C-word situation is the same way that they try to keep us separating. And when I say they, I mean the powers of B, whatever you want to call that. You could call it Illuminati, you could call it the Rothschilds, the bankers, the demons, the devil, or you could just call it man. You can call it whatever the fuck you want to call it. But the powers that be, um, I forgot where I was going there, trying to explain what the powers that be are. But those powers, they could be people that don't pay taxes because they're multi-billionaire, trillionaires, and they're exempt from that shit, keep their money in offshore accounts. Um... People who can get seven or eight fucking heart implants before they die and shit. Have y'all seen that motherfucker? Anyway, if you don't know who I'm talking about, it's fine. I'm not going to mention their name, uh, but you might know who I'm talking about. And it's, yeah, anyway. Uh, so people on the internet are arguing right now. 
And I was trying to be, I was trying to stay out of it, man. Cause I, I to be honest with y'all, I really saw both sides of the situation. I saw the fact that, that there are numbers that, uh, make this situation seem, uh, overindulgent. And then there are other things that make it seem like, okay, well, we're not doing enough. And then there are other people who try to talk down on you for not believing one way or another. So anyway, I was trying to stay out of it until I saw this picture on Instagram with a Caucasian fellow. You know, and I love all races, uh, but it was a picture somebody drew of a man with a mask, with his, his, you know, it was a mask, but a hand mask, as if to say that his freedom of speech is being taken because he has to wear the fucking mask. And I call bullshit. It's not true. You can still freedom of speech, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And there's kids in the fucking detention facilities, the detention camps, that they've been reported, they've been molested, probably worse. And these are on our border towns in the United fucking States. And these are humans. So while people are crying and shit and bitching about having to stand six feet apart from a motherfucker and having to wear a mask, talking about, oh, this is like slavery and this and that, all I can say is it's not. And that's privilege to be able to complain about that shit. Right now we got running water, we got electricity, at least in the United States. Uh, the grid is still up, we have internet. Bro, we are rich. We have freedom like a motherfucker. And I'm one to be a conspiracy theorist and I'm usually a Debbie Downer and shit, but it's kind of hard to be negative uh, for me personally. And it is a negative situation for a lot of people. And that's why at the end of this, uh, different people will have different experiences come out of it. And one of the sides that I understand with people who want to end this shit already is that there's people, uh, there's children and women at home getting... Uh, I feel like domestic violence has probably no, gone up a little bit. Uh, no answer, no solution is going to be perfect. <coughs> so, I don't know, man. I try to respect everybody's opinion. Uh, this is America, and that's the good thing that we all get to complain or, or shout out and joy. We want to. We can pray to the God that we want to. You know what I'm saying? So, if anything, those people that are talking about our rights and shit should talk about the Patriot Act of 9-11. Because that was the beginning of taking away some of our constitutional rights. Uh, uh, arrested for suspicion of the terrorist act. I don't want to get too political, right? But that's a slippery fucking slope. When you can suspect somebody and say, oh, they might commit a crime, lock them up. That's not what the judicial system is supposed to do. But we can do that now. I can't do that now, but the president, the government, Obama, Trump. <laughs> so, they want to talk about rights, man. I mean, let's talk about rights, bro. They're, they're taking away all our privacy on the fucking online and shit. I mean, any camera that you got, they're probably watching every now and then. I might be paranoid, but I do put a little sticker on my camera when I'm not using it. Right now, I'm obviously using it, so I took the little sticker off and shit. <laughs> Point yeah. is, it's an invasion of privacy, and they have the right to do it. You know, I saw uh, I, I, there was a theory on a comment that said, uh, what if we're, what if the U.S. government is uh, trying to protect us with the mask from facial recognition from malware or like if the Chinese government hacked into our uh, systems, which is an interesting theory. I'm one that subscribes to the theory that, my theory is too fucking crazy to go into right now, but fuck it, I'm, I'm gonna say it. And maybe it's my trauma that caused me to believe this, but from what I read in the Bible and the shit that I studied uh, with conspiracy theories like the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, um, all those monopolies and, and uh, 
you know, like the 33rd degree masonry. And maybe all this is fake. Maybe it is. Maybe, But you know what? It really doesn't matter. What matters is that you or I, as an individual, try to remain positive, try to spread positivity. Um, so I'm not even going to get into that shit. Because it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you if we take care of ourselves and our loved ones, whether there's an afterlife or not, whether you believe in karma or not, it seems like when you do good, good happens to you most of the time. And that's not every... No, no situation is clear-cut across the board. There's obviously situations... Let's say like Job, where the, I don't know if that was a real story or not, but it's a good story. Uh, you know what I mean? And I don't know if most of y'all probably know Job, but Job used to worship God, and supposedly the devil told God he only worships you because you give him everything he wants. Because he was wealthy, he had a wife, he had kids and shit. And God was like, nah. And it's all supposedly, this is what the Bible says. He was like, nah. Even if you took all that shit away, he would still worship me. So the devil was like, all right, bet. And according to the Bible, at least the edition that they released for the public to see, the one that doesn't include the Apocrypha, which has two Ezra's, which is a very interesting book if you ever get a chance. On the Bible app, if you download or read the Common English version, and then you look at uh, two Esdras, E-S-D-R-A-S. <coughs> There's a story about a dude named Ezra who fasts uh, for a week and he's crying out to God. God sends an angel. He's asking this angel all these questions like, why do we suffer if we, if we worship you? Why do the enemies thrive if they worship these false idols and false gods? In the answers that were given, uh, I've read this book several times, and I don't even know how to relay the answers, so I just recommend that it be read if you have time. I mean, some of y'all ain't got shit but time. Some of y'all, some people have been working more during this uh, situation than other people have, because they're essentials. So we are in a period or a time of unknown, right? And a lot of times that's where trauma comes from, situations that you don't know the conclusion. You don't know. It's not a safe outcome that you can think of when your parents are fighting and you think your dad might accidentally kill your mom or when your parents are fighting and you're crying so... Your dad put the fucking plastic bag over your, or fucking pillowcase over your head or some shit. Uh, a lot of times, trauma comes from situations that you don't know the outcome. That you might have died or something. Or, or something that... That's what this is. That's what this is. That's what everybody's going through right now. We don't know what the fuck is really going on. And we all have questions and they're only telling us some shit. People are arguing and people are, are getting mad at the people who are just trying to follow their rules and trying to keep their job. Don't get mad at somebody if they're working at a business and that business tells that employee that you have to enforce this this rule by wearing a mask. It's, it's not that big of a fucking deal, bro. And then if they, I mean, they're just doing their fucking job, man. They're just trying to stay safe. I mean, at worst, what? It hides us from your bad stinking ass breath and shit, your nasty ass teeth and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, say it don't spray. That shit ain't gonna happen no more. I don't like wearing a mask. And and I don't necessarily believe that it does everything that supposedly they say it does for us. But at the same time, it's a simple fucking thing. It's not... I'm not a slave. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not... I mean, and I've argued before that we are slaves in a way... To a system that keeps everybody at a certain level. But but the fact that there's so much outrage over having to just wear a mask. I 
find it ridiculous. But there's so many, like, we live in ridiculousnessness. Uh, what was that movie? Idiocracy. Like, we live in this fucking... And then there's people who are going to tell people that they're stupid for not voting for Joe Budden. Joe Budden. Joe Biden. Yo, Joe Biden and Joe Budden should do a fucking uh, collaboration or some shit. The way Killer Mike and Bernie Sanders have. I mean, I feel like Bernie Sanders was a cool ass cat, but I don't know. I I don't I don't really get into politics because it's so sticky, and I don't understand it. Well, the only thing I understand is that um, money is a big part of it. That's why cannabis has been illegal for so long. At first, it was to keep Mexicans out of the United States because cannabis used to be used in the in the United States, but as a tincture, as an oil. Uh, the same as codeine and and everything. Uh, probably yeah, cocaine was in Coca Cola, but in the early you know in the early United States, hemp was grown by the forefathers, <clears throat> and uh, but there became a time when. Uh, Similar to very recently, and it happens again and again and again. History repeats itself, and there was an influx of Mexican uh, immigrants. Even though Texas and California and all this shit was Mexico, so whatever. But uh, it was, and then and then and then and then uh, black jazz musicians used to smoke weed too. So then uh, a guy who owned uh, a log company. Uh, because hemp was also used as a cheaper method for making paper, um, did this campaign, the smear campaign for weed, and uh, there used to be articles and advertisements that said marijuana made white women want to sleep with black men and Mexicans, and 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 you know the Mexicans would come and they would work hard and all they would do is smoke a joint, you know. At the end of the now it's like nothing. Now there's Big business Caucasians, and I love Caucasian. You know, there's great people in every single race. Excuse me. And there's bad people in every single race, just like religions. There's good people in religions, and there's bad people in those religions. Um, you can't paint a brush. Just like there's not all not all Republicans are assholes, and not all uh, Democrats are uh, liberal assholes, and you know. But there are those in those situations. Not every atheist or every, you know, some atheists are great people. Um, some are assholes. That's just, some people are just assholes. It doesn't matter their skin, their race, their gender. Um, it doesn't matter, no, their sexuality. You know, and... You know, that's that. But after this, we'll see how the trauma's gonna be, man. Hopefully, um, and I and I was thinking that. I mean, America has a has a very short amount. We don't. Mental illness is put on the back burner. The prison industrial system, complex, uh, would rather have. Um, people in there uh, working for basically free like slaves than to get them actual help so over years and years you know <clears throat> uh, more institutions were closed less mental health was affordable and then what do we have now well we have crime which has always been around but There's too much wrong with the system. What keeps me positive is that the fact that the part of the Bible I do believe that says uh, at the end of a period, Jesus will come back, God will lock up the devil. Um, whether that's metaphorical or physical, I don't know. But it says... And I know this, I feel like in my heart I, I understand because I feel like the way that the world is now, uh, it doesn't feel natural. Like I, I used to always hate like the nine to five um, 
faking the smile, doing all that shit when I work customer service. And, uh, and then when I read that during the technological revolution, uh, there was like articles and shit that said we were going to be working less and having more vacation and getting paid more because of technology. But it seems like it's doing the opposite effect. People are losing jobs. We have to work more, less vacation. Despite technology that's supposed to make our lives easier. But what it does is make the billionaires richer and the poor people poor. That's why when I go to the fucking grocery store, I try not to uh, do no self-checkout. Though it's been a while since I've been to the grocery store. But it's like, nah, I didn't come here to fucking work. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. And it's just, it eventually it's going to take away jobs. Right now I'm looking at this bird with the red head. I don't know what kind of bird it is. But it's beautiful. Birds are fucking beautiful. So anyway, so a part of the Bible that I, a particular part that I believe says that the earth is going to go back to the way God intentioned before man sinned or before what I believe was because the, the tree, the symbol of a tree was often representative of, of, a, of a man or a person. And it's, it's interesting when you compare a, a tree to a person, right? Like, um, our skin looks like it has, like, if you look real close, it looks like bark, right? And trees have bark. Um, their branches are like arms. Their roots are like feet and legs. For some reason, trees and stuff like that. So anyway, so my theory that I didn't make this up by myself. I read it somewhere while back years ago is that the devil or you could call him a multi-dimensional being it's another thing it's another way you could refer to angels or aliens right because if you think about it or if you believe there are multi-dimensions and there are beings that um are able to go back and forth and we're just third dimensional we're just this dimension and most people as far as i can as far as i know we're unable to just go back and forth but since we're made of stars and and those beings are made of light i think well anyway so so the devil or snake what I think is because all right, so Adam and Eve they didn't know they were naked, they were like uh, innocent, and there was a point where I think the devil formed himself as a man, an attractive man probably, and convinced Eve to have intercourse, and then. When she was like, "Oh, this is this is this is the forbidden fruit. This is what we weren't supposed to do." You know what I'm saying? This is who, we're... and it was all right. So she went and showed Adam, and uh, I don't know if they had like a threesome. I know this is blasphemous to a lot of y'all, but it's not. It's not. I don't. I don't. God is an intelligent, humorous being. We're made in the image of God. Right, so if we're if we're, if we're curious and we question things, God wanted us to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so anyway, so then Eve introduced Adam to sexual intercourse. Then they realized they were naked. They became embarrassed, and God was like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Another thing that's weird is uh, when Cain. So. Another aspect that helps me into that theory of thinking, um, they had twins, Cain and Abel. It isn't scientifically impossible for a woman to have sex with two men and have twins and one be from each man. It's not impossible. Very, very unlikely. But 
when you read the Apocrypha, which are these books that were taken out of the Bible that was given out to mass, but it's now available online on that uh, Bible app, if you read the Common English Bible, the CEB version. Um, damn, I forgot where I was going with that, but... Uh, it said, uh, oh, it said a seed of evil was grown in Adam, I guess. Was it Adam? Well, anyway, so Cain was the son of the devil. Adam was the... Abel was the son of Adam. And that's why... I never understood why God didn't favor Cain. Like, why didn't he like him? As a kid, I was like, well, what the... He didn't... What did he do? He didn't provide... He didn't give... But God never fed us. That's all I used to say. So it only makes sense that that's the reason why. Now, another interesting aspect that... When some Christians like to say they were a product of incest, which I disagree with, when Cain is marked and says, uh, if you kick me out, people are going to, they're going to kill me or something like that. And God said, you'll be marked so you won't be killed, but they'll know what you did or some shit like that. So Cain leaves and he find, he goes to a city and finds a wife. Yo, he didn't fuck his sister, bruh. You know what I'm saying? He went to a city. It says it in the Bible that everybody has. He goes to a city and meets a wife and has kids and shit. And they're Canaanites and then that, you know, it goes on and on and on. It's also interesting that in the Bible that we all have, not everybody believes in any of it. And I understand why. I believe in parts. Uh... You got to take everything with a grain of salt, I feel like. Even if something sounds great, it's like, okay. But I know in my heart of hearts, I know that God is real. And I feel like because history aligns with a lot of the Bible, some of these things are real. But I know that man is corruptible. Important so it's amazing. The fact that it said that um, at one point, the sons of man, no, the sons of I don't know, the, the angels, the demons, the aliens, if you want to call them, the, uh, the, the multidimensional beings would come down to earth. Babies that would be like giants. And those babies, those giants, would be the leaders of the world, the Bible says. They'll be the rulers. They'll be the, the great warriors, basically. Not all of them. Some of them are good because it, it's like if man has evil and good in him. And it's up to us to overcome the evil as much as fucking possible because it's in there. And maybe that's why they say we're all born sinners. Maybe. Um, and you know what's interesting about Jesus is even the, the Quran, even in the, 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 the Muslims believe in Jesus. So this whole separation thing that they try to separate us and say we're all different and it's just like there's extremism and everything. Um, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. <coughs> um, that's why I can never get into like, well, that's not why. I was going to say that's why I could never get into like Harry Potter and shit because when I start... Learn about the angels and demons and actual history. It's like, well, shit, there's so much shit to learn about. It's so interesting that hasn't, that wasn't even made up. But I do like made up shit. I like, uh, um, like historical fiction. Um, it's pretty fun to read sometimes. The comic books, I love comic books. Especially Ninja Turtles. If I had money... I'll buy so many comic books every week, which is a good thing that comic books are coming back. Um, they were not, they weren't, no comics were worked on or released during that period of time. Um, and we're still in this period of time, but, but that period of time, I guess where I'm at, That first time has passed. 
Uh, now we're like in the second part and just see what happens next. So we'll see. Um, shout out to the people in Michigan who are suffering uh, right now because of that. Um, I don't know what happened to this flood. Um, I know it's it's springtime, so it's going to be tornado season and shit. And I think those kind of events uh, cause mass trauma, too, because it's a mass group of people who have the same... They're in the same situation, but they all react differently, but they all have a traumatic experience, and they're all uh, affected for the rest of their life. Um, mass trauma. You know, and it, and it repeats itself in history. It probably won't be the last time we have some kind of mass traumatic um uh, situation uh <clears throat> so that's an ugly face i just made let me take this hit and see if i want to talk about something else if i want to leave that for next week but i was thinking about making a whole episode about like my middle school middle school trauma i think that's what i'll do next week because for most of us middle school was a uh, tumultuous, interesting time. So yeah, I think that's what I'll talk about next week. For now, <coughs> excuse me, keep your heads up. We're going to get through this. Um, trauma comes with life. And life comes with trauma, but if you're positive, you can beat that trauma or use it to make you stronger. Um, I think that's it, man. Thank y'all for tuning in to the third episode with me, X. I'll let y'all next week on the Friday podcast. Peace.